Entrepreneurship is one of those words that gets tossed around a lot, especially in the wonderfully grifty world of YouTube. It sounds exciting, right? The idea of being your own boss, building something from the ground up, creating your own path. But let's face it, there's a lot of noise out there. And when I say noise, I mean noise. Most successful entrepreneurs don't have time for making YouTube videos, but all of the unsuccessful entrepreneurs certainly do. These are the people who make more money selling a course in their field of expertise than they actually make working in the field of expertise. You guys know the type. Just so you don't accuse me of being that type, here's a quick pitch to ease your mind. My name's Brian, I own a seven-figure Pokemon card business in Omaha, Nebraska. I started it with my wife, Andrea. We built it together. I make YouTube videos inspiring others to do the same. I don't have a course, an email list, or a Patreon. I make 100% of my money from YouTube ad revenue and from gaining new customers from my Pokemon card business. This channel is a sales funnel and a hobby, nothing else. At any rate, grifter, scammer, success story, or mogul, everyone on YouTube is telling you to hustle and grind. What does that even mean? Here's the thing. Starting your own business isn't just about working hard, hustling, grinding, or even having a brilliant idea. It's about making a decision to bet on yourself. That's what taking the leap really means. It means saying, I'm gonna give this a shot, even if I'm not sure where it's gonna go. And yeah, I know that can be scary. The fear of failure, probably being the scariest, it's real. But here's a perspective shift that might help. What if you didn't see failure as the end, but as a step along the way? Every entrepreneur, every business owner you admire has failed at some point. The trick is they didn't let the failure stop them. They learned from it, adopted, and kept moving forward. Now I know as I read this script, it sounds super cliche and honestly kind of cringe, but now that I'm the ripe old age of 31 years old, I gotta say it's true. My first job was in retail, then outside labor, and then a few really depressing corporate jobs in the life insurance and recruiting industries. For all these jobs, I tried daily to escape the nine to five. I had the brilliant ideas, the hustle and grind, but what I didn't have yet was the reps, the numbers, the failures. Every brilliant idea I had blew up in my face. Some cost me a lot of money too. When I was 21, I really wanted to be a musician. I stupidly invested in equipment that I had zero business in owning. I stayed up all night multiple times a week making beats and trying to get them viral on SoundCloud. I had the executive package on FL Studios, all the plugins, all the effects. But the thing is, I just wasn't good at it. When I finally gave up, I thought I wasted all my time, but looking back, again at the ripe old age of 31, I realized this failure taught me something. Humility. Music is an art. I was trying to make it a business. My next idea in the 21 to 22 age range of life was to build a clothing brand. You know, typical print-on-demand, streetwear nonsense. I took it seriously though. I paid designers on Fiverr, I tried designing myself, I downloaded software, I learned how to make mock-ups of my shirts, I learned video editing to make TikToks and Reels, I built a website on Wix, and I learned how e-commerce works. I hustled and grinded, as they say, every single day, and it actually did get me a few sales. But that's it. I failed. But to keep the theme, looking back, the passion I had for that clothing company led to my skill in web building. In fact, I transformed my clothing company website into the site I use today, in 2024. Pokeyenny.com, my Pokemon card business, it used to be a clothing site. I generated just a few hundred dollars of sales at the time selling t-shirts, and now I'm generating millions in sales selling Pokemon cards. It's funny how the future works. A failed clothing company taught me how to do other things too. Canva, which is a great website for generating product images, and for making high engagement videos. These skills all became vital in my current industry. I use them to this day but I would have never guessed how valuable that failure was at the time. During and after the clothing company, I developed aspirations to become a YouTuber. I tried all sorts of genres, animal education, I had a lot of reptiles at the time, video games, tech reviews, even ASMR, I'm not even kidding. I actually did get monetized and I did earn some affiliate money, but ultimately I gave up. I got dull, I lost sight of myself, started doubting myself, and ultimately I failed. But again, I learned more skills there, skills that I use to this day. The importance of audio quality, especially with the ASMR, how lighting works with cameras, how to edit in Adobe Premiere Pro, 
how to make thumbnails, how to cross post. Yes, my aspiring ASMR career failed, but the skills are still used every single day. And I know they're working. You know how? Because you're still watching this video. Speaking now in 2024, it seems all inspirational, right? It sounds like I always had a plan. Well, guess what? It didn't feel like that at the time. It was exhausting, it was depressing, everything I tried leaved to perceived failure. I invested money in equipment, in ads, I lost so much time that I could have spent with friends and family. It didn't feel inspirational at the time, it felt hopeless. And by the way, I just gave you the cliff notes. I seriously tried to make a living in art, dubia roach breeding for my reptiles, I tried making atlas stones, custom shoes, I tried Amazon FBA, drop shipping, online retail arbitrage, smart home tech installations, vending machine routes, you name it, I tried it, I failed at it, but I always learned something from it. And in no particular order, useful skills in that long list of strange hobbies and businesses include Excel formulas, organization, negotiation, finding the best deals, installing hardware and software, and just putting myself out there. That was a long monologue, and I'm definitely infamous for doing that, but the point is, I failed a lot of times, and the only reason I'm doing my dream job of selling Pokemon cards full time is because I allowed myself to fail. And again, I didn't know I was allowing myself to fail at the time. I truly thought I could be a successful Dubia Roach breeder, but that passion, that hard work, that drive, that's what led to where I am now. So if you're stuck on step zero and you haven't even started yet because you're afraid of failure, let me tell you champ, you should probably get going. When you're starting out, you're not supposed to have all the answers. You're not supposed to know exactly what you're doing. In fact, if you're waiting to have everything figured out before you start, you'll never start. The real growth happens when you're in the trenches, solving problems, making mistakes, and yes, making failures. Lots and lots of failures. The bad part is those failures aren't going to have the rocky theme song blaring in the background. They're not going to feel like you're growing or progressing. Starting a business is a journey and a silent one. The inspirational montage of your life effort comes years after you start it, if at all. Entrepreneurship isn't a straight line from idea to success and going back to the Rocky Balboa theme song reference, it's also not a straight row of stairs in Pennsylvania. Instead, it's a winding road with twists and turns, highs, very low lows as well. But every step is a step a little closer to building something that's yours. Whether that be a full-time escape the 9 to 5 gig, or just a side hustle to raise some extra money. As long as it's something you're proud of, you're doing it right. So if you've been sitting on an idea, if you've been thinking about starting something, but you haven't taken the plunge yet, you gotta ask yourself, what the hell is holding me back? Is it fear? Is it uncertainty? They're valid feelings, both of those, but they don't have to control your decisions. Instead of thinking about everything that can go wrong, you need to start focusing on the few things that can go right. It's important to remember that every business out there, including mine, started with someone deciding to take the first step. They didn't have a guarantee, they didn't have a crystal ball, they had an idea, a vision, and the courage or stupidity or naivety to see where it could go. So here's my challenge to you, listener. If you've got a dream, if you've got a vision or something you want to create, just take the leap. You're probably going to fail. It's going to feel horrible. But in the end, you'll be able to look back and go, oh, I learned A, B, C, and D, and if I didn't take the leap on A, I would have never got to where I am now. It's all part of the journey. A year or two or three, or in my case, seven years from now, you might look back and wonder why you didn't start sooner. This is definitely a different sort of video for me. I typically focus on the Pokemon business side of things, but this is kind of general entrepreneurship advice, and I know I have a lot of viewers who are just general entrepreneurs, so if you guys want to see a video like this every so often, definitely not regularly, let me know in the comments, and if you hated it, give me a down vote, because I'm just trying to learn how to be better at YouTube. And either way, if you want to give me some money, go to pokeyne.com and buy my stuff. Again, this is a business channel that makes 100% of its income from YouTube ad revenue and from selling products. No courses, no Patreons, no paid email lists, none of that nonsense. If you're down with that, subscribe. Thank you, and as always, have a wonderful night.